We live in interesting times. Today's stories. Picasso painting with 25,000 owners on show in Geneva. Brazil president angrily rejects latest graft allegations. Africa football boss wants Europe to back Morocco World Cup bid. Rare anti-government protests in Malawi. Canada van massacre driver charged with murder. Canada remembers tragedy that claimed lives of Saskatchewan's Humboldt Broncos team members. G7 ministers meet on Russia, Iran and North Korea threats. Two wanted in Peru over lynching of Canadian for shaman murder. Plus, a feature on the Vancouver Auto Show. And Marvel's Infinity War is set to break records with an all-star cast. This is Eagle News Canada, bringing you stories from around the globe. I am Arnie Aquino. It won't hang on the wall in their living rooms, but they own it nonetheless. 25,000 internet users banded together to buy a Picasso painting, which went on display in Geneva on Friday. Visitors to Swiss bargain site Coca usually ended up buying a new drill, a set of luggage, or a cheap trip to Marrakesh. But last December, the website that was created in 2005 with the motto, We do anything, but it's all for you, proposed a painting by none other than artist superstar Pablo Picasso. Lancer ce, cette, cette idée-là, on nous a dit mais euh, vous pourrez, euh, enfin oublier quoi, c'est juste impossible. Et puis quand on a, on a commencé à parler de, de Picasso, on m'a dit alors là c'est doublement impossible. The 1968 painting titled Bus de Musketeer, or Musketeer's Bus, was offered up at the bargain price of 2 million Swiss francs, or 2 million dollars, or 1.7 million euros. Over the course of three days, 25,000 people purchased 40,000 shares at a price of 50 Swiss francs each to become the proud owners of the work. Coca's main objective was selling a work by arguably the most famous artist of the 20th century was obviously to go viral and get people talking about the website. Company chief and founder Pascal Mayer said. Alors cette œuvre va, va être exposée dans, dans divers musées. Là, on va commencer par euh, un, un musée qui se trouve à Genève, qui s'appelle le Mamco, et euh, ensuite de ça, c'est la communauté qui va voter et qui va définir dans, quel sera le, le prochain musée. But standing in the middle of the site's open workspace with its young, hip staff bent over laptops, the 37 years old stressed the move had also been inspired by a desire to democratize the art world which he said was often viewed as closed and obscure. The company gathered a team of specialists to certify the authenticity of the painting, but also to ensure that the price was fair. Mayer refused to divulge how much Coca paid for the 58 by 28.5 centimeter painting, which portrays what looks like a man with a pointy beard and mustache and a lazy collar. He said only that the company bought it from a European seller who did not wish to be identified. Geneva's Modern Art Museum was on Friday for the first time to receive that honor. For the reputedly highbrow museum, associating with a crowdsourcing scheme could serve to help broaden its appeal beyond the elitist crowds it usually attracts. Each owner has been issued his or her own card bearing individual numbers and a picture of the painting, allowing them to come and admire it at will for free. À partir de vendredi 27 avril, à présenter le tableau euh, avec euh, une première interactivité proposée, euh, un système qui permet aux propriétaires au sens collectif, c'est-à-dire à 25 000 personnes identifiées comme des individus, de venir munis de leur carte de propriétaire, entrer gratuitement au musée. Brazilian President Michel Temer on Friday angrily rejected newspaper reports that he laundered bribe money through remodeling of his family's properties. A report in the respected Folha newspaper said a police investigation into corruption involving several of Tamir's friends pointed to the president laundering money in residences belonging to his wife, Marcella, and their son, among other family. Investigators believe that one of the accused retired Colonel Jao Baptisma Lima facilitated bribes to Tamir worth at least 2 million reals in 2014. The bribes were allegedly paid by port logistics company Rodrimar in exchange for having concessions extended in Sao Paulo Santos Harbor. O Globo newspaper, meanwhile, reported that police will question one of Timur's daughters, Marcella Timur, next Wednesday. 
a house belonging to her in Sao Paulo, is suspected to have been used to launder money. Timur lashed out in a televised statement at the lies against his honor. Só um irresponsável, mal intencionado, ousaria tentar me incriminar a minha família, minha filha, meu filho de nove anos de idade, como lavadores de dinheiro. Não se trata até de mentiras assacadas contra a minha posição funcional. É contra a minha honra. E pior ainda, mentiras que atingem minha família e meu filho, que hoje tem nove anos de idade. Se pensam que atacarão minha honra da minha família e vão ficar impunes, não ficarão sem resposta, como esta que eu estou dando agora. The arrest of Temer's associates in March brought Brazil's giant corruption scandal ever closer. Last year, two criminal corruption charges were filed against Temer, but he escaped further prosecution because Congress voted against removing his presidential immunity. Dozens of powerful politicians have fallen into the car wash anti-graph net following revelations that Brazil's leaders were systematically giving contracts with state-controlled enterprises in exchange for massive bribes. Earlier this month, ex-president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva began a 12-year prison sentence after being convicted of taking a seaside apartment as a bribe from a major construction company seeking contracts with a state-controlled oil company Petrobras. The head of African football, Ahmed Ahmed, has urged Europe to back Morocco's drive to host the 2026 World Cup in return for African support for a future European bid. In an exclusive interview, Ahmed Ahmed, the Confederation of African Football President, appealed to European self-interest, saying, vote for us and we'll vote for you next time. Morocco is a two-horse race against a rival United bid from the USA, Canada, and Mexico. The decisive vote will take place at the FIFA Congress in Moscow in June 13, one day ahead of the start of the 2018 World Cup in Russia. In a wide-ranging discussion, Ahmed, who replaced long-serving Issa Hayatu as head of CAF in March 2017, spoke of the importance of Africa's bid to host the World Cup for only the second time, as well as significant changes that will shake up next year's Africa Cup of Nations, or CAN. He said Africa and CAF stood solidly behind Morocco's bid to organize the 2026 World Cup, which will come 16 years after South Africa staged the tournament. Ahmed said he was working to win backing from European nations for Morocco's candidacy, saying that any support would be reciprocal. He added that a Moroccan World Cup would offer significant advantages to Europe. Last week, the head of French Football Federation, Noël Legret, promised French backing, praising Morocco's development and saying Africa deserved another World Cup, given the quantity of ta talented players emerging from the continent. Ahmed said CAF was supporting the five African teams who have qualified to take part in the 2018 World Cup in Russia, offering them financial and material support. Looking ahead to the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, he said that the host nation, Cameroon, is expected to overcome problems with preparation, including delays on building work on stadiums. He said an official report on the issues was being drawn up. For the first time, the 2019 CAN will be expanded from 16 teams to 24 and will be held in the Northern Hemisphere summer rather than in the winter. Moi, j'ai un principe de gestion. Si je suis élu, c'est pour répondre aux attentes des parties prenantes. Et les parties prenantes, que ce soit les fédérations, les joueurs, les entraîneurs, Tous, vous avez entendu, lorsqu'ils se sont réunis, lorsqu'on les a réunis pour ce symposium, c'est eux qui ont voulu. On a déjà écouté, on a entendu leurs cris, mais c'est dans... 
on les a réunis officiellement pour qu'il y ait une tribune d'expression. On peut, on peut être flexible et on, on les a dit. On a déjà annoncé dès les départs. Ce n'est pas figé. On peut revoir ensemble avec les parties prenantes dans tel cas He said that the switch to summer was not fixed in stone and could be adopted for future tournaments. Thousands of Malawians took part in the country's first nationwide anti-government demonstration since 2011, with peaceful protests held in six cities. The marches, organized by civil action groups, were against alleged corruption and poor governance under President Peter Mutarika who has ruled the country since 2014. We have an electricity problem here in our country. We don't have electricity each and every time. So that's why we are demonstrating. Yeah, too much corruption in our country. Kumbava wa fika boera. Odali yesi kumajita kuzona unina kuti muntu yu. Aguba nditu. Kumano, nizo mvesa jisoni anta kumaba ngadiguti ndinchali ichi. Kumajita kuzona unina boera. Kunina kuti aa. Zimene zubuji di kasa longoso kasa mvega. Nao, danda ulola Malawi, ligweni kakuti li mvega ndibo li gwire nchido kwa Malawi ina ali yesi. Some members of Matarika's Democratic Progressive Party had threatened to disrupt the protest, but the event passed off without clashes. At the July 2011 anti-government protests, police opened fire, killing 20 unarmed civilians in scenes that shocked the country and saw international donors cut aid. Malawi is one of the world's poorest and most aid-dependent countries. Former President Joyce Banda is expected to return to Malawi on Saturday after four years of self-imposed exile, despite facing the threat of arrests over corruption allegations. Up next, Canada van massacre driver charged with murder. Canada remembers tragedy that claimed lives of Saskatchewan's Humboldt Broncos team members. G7 ministers meet on Russia, Iran, and North Korea threats. Two wanted in Peru over lynching of Canadian for shaman murder. Eagle News Canada will return in a moment. Welcome back. You are watching Eagle News Canada. A Canadian man who apparently had a grudge against women was charged with murder after allegedly plowing a rented van onto a crowded Toronto sidewalk, killing 10 people, an incident that shocked the nation. Jonah May Madrano reports. Police said the suspect, 25-year-old Alec Manassian, was not known to them before Monday's carnage in Canada's most populous city, which also left 14 people injured. Most of the victims were women. Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale played down any suggestions that the attacks bore any hallmarks of those carried out by truck-driving extremists in London, Nice and other cities, saying there is no discernible connection to national security. But authorities said the incident during the busy lunch hour was undoubtedly deliberate. Lead investigator Detective Sergeant Graham Gibson said Minasian had posted a cryptid message on Facebook minutes before he began driving the rented van along Young Street, eventually jumping the curb on the sidewalk. In the post, Minasian praised mass killer Elliot Roger, a 22-year-old American who murdered six people and then killed himself in California in 2014, and who had professed frustration over his virginity and women rejecting him. Gibson said the victims of the Toronto attack were predominantly women and ranged in age from the mid-20s to 80s. Minasian also referred to himself on social media as a private in army. Canadian military spokeswoman Jessica Lamarande confirmed that he enlisted last August but asked to be discharged only after 16 days of basic training. A shaven-headed Manassian appeared in court to hear the charges against him, 10 counts of premeditated murder and 13 attempted murder, and a fourth count of attempted murder was pending after the toll of injured was revised down. He has been charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder, 13 counts of attempted murder, and we're anticipating a 14th count of attempted murder, which will be laid shortly following some uh, follow-up investigation. Manassian stood impassively with his hands behind his back wearing a white police jumpsuit. He was calm as he was led away. 
The suspect is scheduled to return to court on May 10 for a bail hearing. Jonah May Medrano, Eagle News 1 with 25. Thank you, Jonah May. Canada remembers tragedy that claimed lives of Saskatchewan's Humboldt Broncos team members. Jonah Lopez reports. In the light of the recent tragedy that claimed the lives of young hockey team members and the crew of Saskatchewan's Humboldt Broncos, Canadians have come together in expressing sympathy for the families who have lost their loved ones. The horrific accident claimed 16 lives when a bus carrying the hockey team collided with a semi-trailer truck on a lonely prairie highway. In the most recent show of support for the grieving Saskatchewan community, people from across Canada donned their favorite sports jerseys as April 12th was declared Jersey Day. Businesses and schools encouraged employees and students to take part in the tribute. One company, AECOM, united in expressing its condolences to the bereaved. Employees attired in their jerseys stood shoulder to shoulder in support of those who lost loved ones and friends. And Canadians continued to show their generosity with millions of dollars donated to a GoFundMe campaign. That fundraiser had four million dollar goal to assist the families left behind. In just four days, donations topped $8.5 million. Reporting for Eagle News, this is Jonah Lopez. I am one with 25. Thanks, Jonah. The foreign ministers of the Group of Seven Industrialized Nations met in Toronto, seeking a common front against what they see as aggression from Vladimir Putin's Russia. Kara Kabusa with more details. The envoys of the Group of Seven Industrialized Nations were keen to glean clues from their U.S. colleague about whether President Donald Trump will tear up the Iran nuclear deal and how he will handle a planned summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. The ministers from the world's most powerful democracies are meeting to plan for June's G7 summit of rich world leaders in Charlevoix, Quebec. But Russia and North Korea will never be far from their minds. Canada's Chrystia Freeland opened the meeting with a gathering to honor female foreign ministers and it was later to host her G7 colleagues plus their European Union's representative at a working lunch to discuss the crisis in Russia and Ukraine. Acting U.S. Secretary of State John Sullivan's first bilateral meeting was with Ukraine's Foreign Minister Pavlo Klimkin, and he reaffirmed the United States' ironclad support for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression. G7 capitals are also worried about Russia's role in supporting Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad's regime in his country's brutal civil war and alleged attempt to kill a defector with a nerve agent on British soil. The foreign ministers issued a joint statement urging the Kremlin to address all questions related to the incident and to make a full and complete disclosure of its previously undeclared Novichok program. Novichok is a group of deadly chemical compounds reportedly developed by the Soviet governments in the 1970s and 80s and which Britain suspects was used to poison former Russian spy Sergei Skripal in Salisbury in March. France's President Emmanuel Macron said in an interview that the West must stand up to Putin's attacks on Western democracy, including the spreading of fake news. The G7 members, including frontline state Japan, support efforts to convince Kim to end his efforts to develop a strategic nuclear missile arsenal, but are also keen to hear more from the U.S. side. Kim is sure to have demands of the West, and allies are keen to ensure that Trump does not give too much away to secure a historic deal. The North Korea meeting will be followed by one of the so-called Quad, the United States plus France, Britain, and Germany, 
the Western partners who, with Russia and China, signed the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Kara Kabusau, Eagle News, one with 25. Thank you, Kara. Peruvian police hunted for two men wanted in connection with the lynching of a Canadian man suspected of killing an elderly female shaman in a remote part of the country's Amazon rainforest. Cat Joy with the report. The body of a 42-year-old Sebastian Paul Woodruff was discovered in the Ucayali region of northeastern Peru bordering Brazil, not far from where the 81-year-old woman was killed a few days earlier. Grisly footage of Woodruff's death at the hands of a mob has been widely circulated on social media. In the video, a man is seen making aggressive attempts to put a black rope around the neck of another man slumped in a puddle with blood on his face who tries unsuccessfully to fight him off. Judge David Pandura ordered the arrest of two suspects, identified as Jose Ramirez and Nicolas Mori, for the alleged offense of aggravated homicide. Prosecutors said that the cause of Woodruff's death was strangulation, noting that there was also evidence of multiple other injuries. They said Woodruff's lynching was linked to a murder of Olivia Arevalo, an 81-year-old healer, rights activist, and respected leader within the indigenous Shipibo Kunibo community who was shot dead on April 19th. According to a local rights group, a man with a foreign accent went to her home and when she opened the door, he opened fire at short range before fleeing on a motorcycle. Police immediately launched a search for the main suspect, whom they identified as a Canadian national. They found Woodruff's body buried nearby on Saturday. The men wanted for his death are members of Arevalo's community. Reporting for Eagle News, I'm Kat Joy, one with 25. Up next, Rachel Kilantang takes us to the Vancouver Auto Show. Eagle News Canada will return shortly. This is Eagle News Canada. I am Arnie Aquino. Every year, the Vancouver Auto Show brings us the latest innovations and designs in the automotive industry. Rachel Kilantang takes us to this year's show. Rachel? The Vancouver International Auto Show 2018, Western Canada's biggest celebration of the automobile, has taken over the Convention Centre West. Hundreds of car enthusiasts flock to the Convention Centre West to enjoy the spectacular array of vehicles that 40 manufacturers have to offer. Big reveals, debuts exclusive to Vancouver, the latest and greatest and a peek into what we can expect to see on our roads in the decade ahead. Vancouver is home to the highest per capita sales of luxury vehicles in North America. Hence, the auto show pays homage to luxury car brands such as Ferrari, Maserati, McLaren, Porsche, Rolls-Royce and Bentley. The car show is designed to cater to all kinds of audiences from families to individuals or groups who may be eyeing their next car or just want to get a feel of the new newest cars. The latest electric vehicles were readily available for a test drive along the famous waterfront. Nothing like a road trip with the beautiful mountains in sight. With many manufacturers making electric vehicles a priority, there are now over 25 vehicle options for environment conscious consumers in BC. Well the show, uh, we, we have over 450 cars on site. Uh, we're going to do record attendance this year. It's been packed. We have something for everyone at the show, whether you're into classics, uh, new cars, you're looking to buy your next car. Uh, the auto show is the best place to come. The Vancouver International Auto Show did not stop at road vehicles. The auto show explored terrain such as snow and sea, and the adventures that could be achieved such as camping, skiing and surfing. And then there were the custom-built cars, a collaboration of manufacturers and creatives to boost the car's potential aesthetically and performance-wise. This was their moment to show their passion for cars and show off their skills and unique creations. We've seen what we'll be driving and dreaming about in the next decade. The cars of today are not cars of yesterday and the, the industry is changing so fast whether it has to do with fuel efficiency, electrification, uh, autonomous driving, uh, safety, everything is, is going at such a rapid pace. This is the best place to come and learn about that and experience it to figure out how that can fit within your lifestyle. 
The 2018 Vancouver International Auto Show is for anyone's entertainment and serious consideration. The automotive industry is moving fast and it's only getting faster. Reporting from the Convention Centre in Vancouver, I am Rachel Kalentang and I am one with 25. Thank you, Rachel. According to Hollywood Media, the film which costs about $300 million to make is likely to wow its audiences for its cutting-edge special effects. The latest Marvel movie Avengers Infinity War took in $630 million in its first weekend, the highest global opening of all time. While U.S. and Canadian box offices, it also set the record for the highest North American opening weekend. Infinity War is the 19th film in the so-called Marvel Cinematic Universe. It combines a whooping nine franchises and more than two dozen superheroes fighting to save the universe. Robert Downey Jr. will wear the red and yellow metal suit once again as Iron Man, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, Scarlett Johansson is back as Black Widow, and Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Also back for more is Black Panther, the Marvel breakout of the year after the massive opening of the standalone pick in February. Captain America is also back, the Hawk, Spider-Man, Hawkeye, and the Guardians of the Galaxy and their assorted allies. Their mission is to prevent the powerful purple alien Thanos by Josh Brolin from destroying the universe. This is the third Avengers film with the final untitled saga set for next year. An important source of inspiration is the Marvel canon. The storylines develop over decades in the original comic books. Infinity War is drawn from the Infinity Gauntlet series from the early 1990s. In the movie's trailer, Gamora by Zoe Saldana, Thanos' daughter of sorts explained that the villain believes that if he annihilates half of the universe, he can save the other half. He needs the so-called Infinity Stones to do it, so the heroes need to keep him from getting them. Join me again next time for more entertainment news. I am Kathleen Cruz for Eagle News Canada, and I am 1 in 25. That is this week's Eagle News Canada. Join us next week for stories that matter to you. Visit our website at eaglenews.ph. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph. Thank you for watching. I am Arnie Aquino. I am one with 25. <laughs>